Welcome everyone to a new episode of Azure Unblocked. Today, we are going to talk about the Azure Arc Jumpstart Arc Box and how you can leverage it for your POCs, labs, and demo environments. Hey, I'm here with Dale, Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft, a member of the Azure Arc Jumpstart team. How are you doing, Dale? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Thank you for having you. Um, so what does a cloud solution architect do, especially when you work on the Azure Jump, Arc Jumpstart team? Uh, yeah, great question. So I'm a member of the uh, Microsoft Global Partner Solutions team in the US. And part of my charter is working with partners to build hybrid cloud solutions. And of course, Azure Arc is a critical portion of that. Uh, and one of the projects I've been very involved with this year is the Azure Arc Jumpstart. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and again, you're here today to talk about the uh, Azure Arc Jumpstart box. Um, so can you, before you actually go in and talk about this, can you explain yeah. a little bit more, more about the Azure Arc Jumpstart project itself? Yeah, let, let me give you just a very brief history. So the Azure Arc Jumpstart is a project that we started about a year, a little over a year ago now. Uh, and it's a collection of over 60 technical scenarios and guidance on how to do specific things with Azure Arc. For example, how do I onboard a AWS EC2 Ubuntu server into Azure using Azure Arc? Or how do I onboard a GKE Kubernetes cluster as an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster? And so these are very specific technical scenarios that we built guidance for as part of the Jumpstart. Uh, and then over time, the Jumpstart product evolved. We have a YouTube channel that we have a lot of different demos on that are outlining those very discrete technologies. Uh, that those discrete technical scenarios for Azure Arc. Uh, but what the Azure Arc Jumpstart Arc box is, is a little bit more opinionated uh, set of collateral to deploy an end-to-end -end, uh, Azure Arc sandbox environment that covers all areas of Azure Arc from servers, Kubernetes, data services, and more, all in a self-contained environment. So that's exactly what the Jumpstart Arc box is, is a self-contained sandbox environment to pretty much do anything you want with Azure Arc in terms of POCs, demos, things like that. Okay, now that that is pretty cool. And again, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Azure Arc Jumpstart uh, project because it makes it so simple to actually um, connect your hybrid and multi-cloud resources and try things out and build these solutions actually like to really go quickly, not just for POC, but I, I use it even for demos. And I know that customers are looking for examples how to onboard this and a lot of the automation uh, the team has done. Now, you already mentioned that we are here to talk about the uh, Jumpstart Arc box. Um, can you like explain a little bit on this, like how it's actually different from uh, the rest of the Ar uh, Azure Arc uh, Jumpstart? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the we have a couple design principles for ArcBox. One is that the only thing you should need to deploy an ArcBox is an Azure subscription. Uh, you know, for some of the other technical scenarios in the Jumpstart, you need to have, for example, an EC2, you know, an AWS account or a, G, a GKE or a GCP account. With ArcBox, you just need an Azure subscription, and it's pretty much a self-contained. Uh, sandbox environment, and it's all you know. It's all inside one resource group. It's also very easy to deploy. We'll show in just a minute how um, how you can get one spun up pretty quickly. Some minimal prerequisites. So that's one of the key design principles. And some of the others are to make sure that we're showcasing kind of end to end real world examples of what actual customers, you know, partners would do with Azure Arc in their production environments with the, you know you know with their cloud and hybrid resources. So. That's the real differentiator from, from our standpoint in terms of ArcBox versus normal jumpstart scenarios is that one, it's end-to-end, -end, it's comprehensive, and two, it's a complete sandbox that's all self-contained inside of Azure with minimal prerequisites. No, I, I love that because, again, that makes it so easy for me uh, to actually deploy this and try it out or even show it uh, to customers or work with customers on this. Um, and again, I have a ton of ideas why I would use that. Um, but can you explain a little bit what, what are actually the, the, the specific use cases you had in mind when the team was working on the Arc box? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, some of the use cases that we envision are for, you know, quickly starting up POCs for, you know, testing out, you know, Azure Arc hybrid solutions. Um, training is another great use case that we've seen a lot of interest in where, you know, partners or 
customers are trying to get, you know, um, engineers, frontline engineers trained on Azure Arc concepts. This is a great way to very quickly stand up an environment at a minimal cost, again, with minimal requirements, and then have, again, that sandbox where you can kind of get in, get your hands dirty, understand the workings of Azure Arc in the context of all the other Azure services that Azure Arc is unlocking. Um, and there's also another number of other use cases that we're exploring, including things like, you know, um, integration testing for various scenarios, um, being able to quickly uh, basically demo content for customer presentations and things like that. Okay, no, this is this is exactly what what I'm personally looking for, and I know that a lot of people in the field and also like people are and customers are looking for this to actually get that all hands-on experience and uh, having an easy way to actually deal with all the arc scenarios. So this this is really really cool. Yeah. Uh, however, I guess this must be like. Look, there must be some prerequisites. And you mentioned I need an Azure subscription, obviously, for this. Uh, is there anything more I need? Yeah, well, let me just show you really quickly kind of at a high level what the architecture looks like. And then we'll kick off a deployment and I'll talk to exactly what those prerequisites are. Um, so just really quickly, this is, an arch this is an architecture diagram kind of showing everything that's inside of an arc box. As I mentioned, it's all self-contained inside of one Azure resource group. So what we'll do is we'll kick off a, um, we'll kick off a deployment it's all you know, ARM template-based deployment. So we'll kick off deployment uh, using an ARM template, specify some parameters. Those are basically the prerequisites beyond just the Azure subscription. Uh, and that's going to spin up all of, this, uh, all of these resources inside of that resource group, including um, basically a cluster API-enabled uh, 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 cluster for deploying data services. There'll be uh, a rancher cluster for de demoing Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, and there'll be uh, a nested Hyper-V host for demoing Azure Arc enabled servers. And that Hyper-V host will have several guests on it that we're projecting into Azure. But why don't I show you what exactly what this looks like as part of a demo, and we could talk to some of those prerequisites uh, in detail. No, that sounds great. Absolutely. I mean, I'm really looking forward to see all these different scenarios and how you actually go out uh, and actually deploy this uh, to the environment. So. Definitely a demo would be great. All right, so uh, let me switch over to the Azure portal here. Uh, and what I've done is we've got, uh, again, this is all ARM template based. So I'll need to specify a couple of parameters. Let me just go ahead and create a new resource group. Uh, it looks like we're gonna, let's, let me pick a different resource, uh, a different region here. We'll use West US 2. I'll give it a new resource group name. We'll call it um, Arc Box Unblogged. And I like the name. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's a couple of parameters we're going to specify. One is just our IP address. And let me pull that over really quickly. Um, we're just using our IP address to make sure that, you know, there is going to be a, um, a client VM that we'll be RDPing into. And this will just make sure that only our, um, you know, this particular IP address can access that client VM via RDP. Uh, we are going to need to specify an SSH public key. So I'll go ahead and paste my SSH key in there, and that's super easy to create if you don't have one already. Uh, we'll need to give a service principle ID and secret. Uh, and so that service principle is one of those prerequisites that we're going to use. Uh, that's part that's used as part of the automation to onboard uh, a number of the Azure Arc resources. I'll give it my tenant ID for my AAD tenant. Uh, and then I can just give it a Windows admin username and password. Give it a those passwords are always so much fun. And then, uh, of course, as part of this deployment, we will be using a log analytics workspace, and those workspace names need to be globally unique. So I'll just go ahead and call this ArcBox Workspace. Um, uh, well, let's call it ArcBox Workspace on Blog123. That should be unique. Uh, and we'll go ahead and kick off the deployment. So let me go ahead and make sure my parameters are valid here. Um, by the way, um, we'll share links at the end. You can use the same type of deployment from the portal uh, pretty easily. Uh, so it looks like my validation passed, and I'll go ahead and I'll kick off the deployment. Okay, this is this is pretty cool. And I, I guess now, since we deploy a couple of things, as you just showed uh, showed me here before, um, we probably it will probably take some time to deploy all of these, like deploying the clusters, uh, the Kubernetes clusters, deploying the data service on top, deploying the virtual machine with the nested virtual machines as well. Um, so, how long do I need to expect? Like, how long need to, I uh, to plan to actually like when I need it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, the deployment is actually a two-step process. The first step is to deploy the ARM templates, which we're doing here. That'll probably take about twenty minutes, maybe twenty-five minutes, just depending 
on um, uh, on several factors, but you can expect about 20 minutes or so. The next step to kick off the rest of the deployment is going to be to actually log in to the client VM that I mentioned. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, I've got just a, an environment here that we can spin up and take a look at what that next step of the deployment looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and RDP into this client VM. And what we'll see when I RDP into that, bo that box, let me make sure I'm using the right account here. I like when people are prepared and they actually have already pre-deployed everything so we can actually have a look at it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that we're logging into the client VM, this client VM you can think of as one of the windows into an arc box. There's a number of windows, the client VM is one of them. And the client VM is also instrumental because on first login, it's gonna kick off a couple of scripts that are gonna run to configure the rest of ArcBox after the actual ARM template is deployed. And so you see, uh, that those scripts kicking off now. So there's there's two different scripts. Um, one is the Arc Servers logon script here, and the other is the Data Services logon script. These are both PowerShell scripts, and if you if you download the actual code, you can take a look at what is actually happening inside of these scripts. But in a nutshell, what's happening is for the Arc Servers login script, we're downloading some VHDs and extracting them and creating guests in the Hyper-V host. So basically, the Arc servers login script is creating the Azure Arc enabled or the servers that will be Azure Arc enabled. And then it's going ahead and onboarding those servers as Azure Arc enabled servers. So that's one step that or that's one half of the automation scripts that the client VM is running on first logon. And the other half is the uh, the data services logon script. And so what this is going to be doing is it's going to be uh, configuring the cluster API cluster that was spun up as part of the ARM template deployment to support Azure Arc enabled data services. And so what that means is we're deploying the Azure Arc uh, uh, data services data controller. And then on top of that, we're deploying a SQL managed instance and a Postgre hyperscale instance on top of that data controller. So we'll have both SQL MI and Postgre hyperscale in our Arc box once all the deployment is finished. In terms of time, this part of the deployment takes about another 15 minutes or so for the VHDs and the, uh, the guest VMs and Arc servers. Uh, logon script to complete, and then for the data services components to complete. So once all that's complete, uh, you have a complete and ready to go ArcBox deployment. Okay, sorry, but this this is pretty cool because it deploys so many things, and I see like there's basically like almost like 100% automation there. Uh, if I see that correctly, it's like really spins up everything, which I usually would need take like hours probably to prepare. And obviously if I do that in my production environment, that is fine. But especially if I want to play around with it and I just want to try something out, I don't want to spend actually time to configure everything correctly and make sure that I have access to it and something like that. And it seems that the uh, art box can really help me like building all this automation. And at the end, I just have my environment, my sandbox <laughs> ready to go. Uh, so that is impressive. Yeah, that's actually, as I mentioned, one of our design philosophies was to uh, make sure that we have a complete sandbox, but we also are providing all of the automation, all of the scripts. So just like you said, in terms of building POCs or starting to you know, kind of tinker with ideas for how you might build a solution for a customer, you can leverage all of the automation we've built already. Um, uh, as part of things like ArcBox and the rest of the Azure Arc Jumpstart to really kickstart or jumpstart as it were, those, uh, those POCs and those demos and things like that. So that's absolutely right. No, this is, this is again great. And I also love the point you actually put out there. Um, like you mentioned that obviously this, this is all public available and you can have access to all the code and the automation. So obviously you could use the Arc uh, box basically to like, use that again for your sandbox environment, try it out. But you could even take out the code, like different parts of the code to build your own automation, uh, to your, build your own deployments, uh, if you are a customer or you, for your own customers or inside your company. So you can actually leverage that and you can see everything the team has done, um, which I find is also, as, as also a pretty cool solution. Yeah, so why don't we take a look at what a completed deployment looks like? That so, sounds fantastic. Perfect. So. I've got another completed deployment here. Um, so basically we're just looking at a, a, da a very quick and dirty dashboard I built in the portal, but this is pretty much um, showing a couple of aspects of the, the ArcBox. First, let's drill into the actual resource group. 
and you'll see all the different resources that get created, which is, you know, it's, I guess that part's mildly interesting, but I do want to point out a couple of things in terms of, you know, in the context of ARC itself, let's go ahead and just group these by type to make this a little bit easier since there are quite a bit of resources, but you'll see there's, you know, one, there's a bunch of, let's call it um, uh, just infrastructure that we need as part of the deployment. So disks and VMs and, uh, you know, log analytics workspaces and things like that. But the real, the real, you know, the real, uh, the real cool stuff is the Azure Arc stuff. So we've got the two Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of these is a rancher cluster. This is this one right here. This is being projected into Azure as an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. And the other is a cluster API uh, cluster, uh, which is ha also happens to be a rancher cluster that we've transformed into a cluster API cluster. And then on top of that, we're deploying um, uh, cluster API workload clusters. And then on top of that, the actual Azure Arc data services. So that's the Kubernetes angle and part of the data services angle. Um, we've also got, if I scroll down a little bit further, we've also got the actual Azure Arc servers themselves. So these are the three guest VMs that are on the Hyper-V host. So I've got an Ubuntu server, a Windows server, and I've also got a SQL server that we're also enabling as an Azure Arc enabled SQL server. So you see that resource here uh, as well. And there's a number of other things that we deploy as part of the automation, including things like a log analytics workspace. You know, we deploy um, a couple of solutions in that workspace, for example, the update management solution uh, and the VM insight solution. So if I go back to the dashboard here, uh, you can see that um, uh, as part of the, um, uh, the deployment, uh, it deployed the update management solution. It's telling me some of my guest VM, some of my Azure Arc enabled servers need some updates and things like that. So I could, you know, we could play around with things like that. There's also a policy that gets deployed. So all of the log analytics agents on the servers themselves are being deployed via the built-in Azure Arc policies. Uh, so that's another, um, another avenue for exploration, for POCs, for demos and things like that. If you need to showcase how Azure Policy and Azure Arc work together, which is one of our, you know, I think one of the a major value prop for Azure Arc, uh, that's, this is one route to do that. So I also mentioned that there's a, you know, that the portal is one window and the client is a, the client VM is another window into ArcBox. So uh, if it's all right, I'll flip over to um, a completed client VM deployment and we'll kind of see some of the things we can do inside the client VM itself. Um, so I'm, I just opened up another, you know, just another RDP session into an ArcBox client uh, for a completed ArcBox. And you can see the automation is all finished here. The automation that we kicked off and showed earlier is all finished. So once it all finishes, it'll, you know, the windows will all close and you'll know that the automation is complete. But now there's a couple of things that we can do to kind of explore our ArcBox. So the first thing I'll do is that I'll, I'll, I'll just open Hyper-V. Um, let me open that up and we'll kind of see the actual guests that we deployed that were projected as Azure Arc servers. So uh, the client VM also happens to be the Hyper-V host. We're using nested virtualization in Azure to accomplish that. So we can see the Azure Arc um, servers right here that we projected into Azure. These are the same servers we just saw over in the portal. Uh, another thing we can do is I can open up, um, let me just open up a shell here. And I can run kubectx. So kubectx is a, uh, is a tool that we can switch uh, Kubernetes context with. And since we have two Kubernetes clusters that we've deployed, we can use this tool to quickly switch between each of them. So if I just do kubectl git pods, um, let me specify the namespace of the Arc data controller. You can see that for this particular cluster, I can see all of the running pods for the PostgreSQL hyperscale for the SQL uh, managed instance and for the rest of the services that are the rest of the containers and pods that make up the Azure Arc data controller. But by using kubectx, I can switch context to the other um, to the other cluster that we've spun up. Um, and now, if I do kubectl, you know, get pods, there's not going to there's not going to be any in this particular namespace. But um, this is just a different kubectx context, basically a different cube, uh, a different Kubernetes environment that we can manage all from the same client. And by using a tool like kubectx, it's easy to just you know kind of work around all the different clusters. Uh, and then the last thing I'll show is we also include Azure Data Studio uh, and a number of other tools. I might add we've got Visual Studio Code. There's a number of tools and things that we include just to make life easier when you're working in the client. But if I open up Azure Data Studio, we can actually connect to our our SQL managed instance and our Postgre hyperscale instance. So let me go ahead and accept the EULA there since it's the first time I'm logging into Azure Data Studio and I'll open up the connections uh, the connections blade here. And you can see my SQL uh, MI instance and my Azure Postgre uh, hyperscale instance are both 
already you know already enabled as connection objects inside Azure Data Studio. And another thing we do that I didn't mention earlier is that we are restoring the adventure work sample database to each of these. Uh, just to kind of give you something to play with um, in terms of the Azure Data Studio service or the Azure uh, Arc enabled uh, data services um, uh, capabilities. So just another little thing that we, we wanted to include to kind of give a more complete type of demo experience. So, you know, there's a lot of other things we have planned and I'd love to talk about some of those, you know, some of those, um, you know, in a little bit, but in a nutshell, this is kind of some of the core functionality. We cover Azure Arc enabled servers, we cover Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, and we cover Azure Arc enabled data services, plus some of the other management capabilities that Azure Arc kind of enables on environment on hybrid environments like these, like policy, like log analytics. You know, we'll talk about you know our, in our roadmap we have things like Key Vault and a number of other things planned to incorporate into ArcBox in the future. So yeah, this is this is amazing. I still can't believe how how cool it is and how fast it is to actually deploy all this. And I was impressed when you actually opened up Data Studio um, and you saw already the connections already added to these um, data services. So I've, I'm pretty cool. Everything is basically done for me. I don't even have to like do some post uh, deployment things and, and stuff like that. I'm sure there are things which you can add later on, but most of it is already done. I don't need to like go out and spend hours and hours in the documentation to just deploy it. Now, you mentioned we can do right now, we can do servers, Linux and Windows. Uh, you built that in. Uh, we have the Kubernetes management part in there. Uh, we have the data services part in there. And you mentioned Key Vault. Uh, can you explain to me a little bit like what the roadmap is going to look like and what will be next uh, for the Azure Arc Jumpstart Arc box? Yeah, absolutely. So as you know, the Azure Arc roadmap itself is is pretty is pretty vast, and there's a lot of great things we have planned for Azure Arc uh, and, and just hybrid cloud in general. Uh, so some of the things on the near term that we want to add to ArcBox, yes, include things like integrating uh, with Key Vault, for example, to rotate keys or certificates down uh, to a server. Um, there's a number of new services on Azure Arc that are planned, um, for example, um, uh, machine learning is one of those. Um, uh, there's other services that will be Azure Arc enabled in the future that we want to, you know, we want to start bringing to the table in terms of inclusion in ArcBox. And there's also another. I wanted to mention one more design principle we have is that we want to give you a lot of stuff to play with in the sandbox, but we want don't want to give you necessarily every single thing. I and mean, there's a number of reasons. One, the deployment time and uh, the cost and things like that would go up if we keep adding everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you have room to explore and start to kind of play around, you know, and and learn, right? And so it's kind of a fine line between what we include and what we don't include, but we definitely will include all of the major, you know, all the major features that Azure Arc rolls out as part of its roadmap. We'll include that as part of ArcBox, you know, Key Vault's one example that we want to uh, include in the near term. No, this this sounds great. I, I like the part where you said like, okay, um, like I, you don't want to include like not everyone needs to deploy everything, right? Maybe I just want to select like I need, for example, servers and Kubernetes, but I don't need the data services part. And then obviously there are more is more stuff coming. Um, I like that you actually built this. Like I can actually select what I what I want and then only deploy this because this will also help me save some costs and some of my uh, in my Azure subscription, right? Um, so now this is. This is great, and I, I, I'm sure um, there's a lot of viewers now want to figure out, okay, um, where can I learn more? How can I start with uh, the Azure Arc Jumpstart Arc box? Um, so Dale, where, where do people go? Yeah, good question. So since the Jumpstart is part, the Azure Arc box is part of the Jumpstart project, you can get to it just from the Azure Arc Jumpstart page. And I know there'll be a link uh, uh, here on the screen. Uh, so that's pretty much where you need to go. You'll go to the Azure Arc Jumpstart uh, uh, page. There'll be a section for the Jumpstart uh, Arc box. And from there, you can have, you know, you'll have all the deployment instructions. You'll have a link to the deploy to Azure button, uh, which will take you right to the portal and let you enter your, your parameters in and you're off to the races. Uh, and of course, if you, are um are, are want to get the actual code itself you can go right to the github repository clone the repository and see all the code uh, it's all an open source project uh, i'll also mention we are more than welcome to have uh, suggestions or or issues or anything like that you can submit those issues directly on github uh and we'll we'll work with you to uh to make sure that those either get resolved or we figure out a way to you know, possibly roll that into the, the roadmap in the future this is awesome. Thank you very much, Dale, uh, for being today's guest in the Azure Unblocked video series. And for you, everyone watching, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. 
uh, and subscribe to the channel and join us on itopstalk.com.